Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted Dim and Dimmer from Moonstone the Game. This model was awesome fun to paint, took me a lot longer than the usual models I paint, I tried a different style, so hopefully you'll enjoy seeing how I did it step by step. You'll see all the paints that I've used, and I'll also talk through all the different stages explaining why I've done each one in a certain way. So here's the model, all primed and ready to go, and I used a Vallejo Panzer grey paint and I airbrushed that on to prime it and then I used some white paint I used the Duncan Rhodes two thin coats white star and gave this two or three Dry brush coats going with strokes from top to bottom to give this zenital highlight And this really brings out all the details on these awesome resin models Then the first paint was a layer Cadian flesh tone and I'm using a wet palette throughout here and I just I'm adding it onto my wet palette and I've got a fair bit of water with this. I'm certainly doing it one part paint to one part water. And then I'm going to get a decent sized brush and give one coat of this over all the areas of the flesh that you can see. So get that belly on there, give it a good coat, taking my time, moving the model. So rather than moving myself around it, I'm turning that model so I've got nice control on my brush. I've got my arms braced on the table and then I can get in there and block in all these colours. If you want to do this and you find you make a mistake, then don't worry, you can simply touch it up with some of that white paint. But there we go, that's one coat, let that dry thoroughly and then repeat with another coat of one part paint to one part water, go all over those areas again. Then I took some Contrast Agarus Dunes and I used this for the club. I didn't like how it turned out, so if you wanted to copy this recipe, just ignore that stage. Then I went for a base paint of Mournfang Brown and I'm gonna paint all the leather straps with this color. Now normally I'd use contrast paints more than anything and I would just go snake bite leather straight away. But I'm really enjoying painting these Moonstone miniatures and I wanna give them a bit more attention. So I've been practicing the layering method and this model, I've got to say, is one of the models I've had the most fun painting out of all my collection from all the games. It was brilliant fun. I think the bigger size really helps too. Next up, I took some Contrast Wildwood, and this is going to be perfect for the beard. It's a really dark brown. It goes right into the recesses, and with all this texture here, you're going to need a fair bit of paint to really work it in. Then I took Contrast Iandan Yellow, and this is going to be for the blonde hair on this head here. And I changed this later on as well, but I'm going to keep every step of the process in so you can see it. Then base Castellan Green. Again, I'm watering these paints down, giving two coats if needed. But here, I believe I only did one coat. Then I give that a coat all over this pouch or satchel. And this is where they keep all the snacks that they gather on the battlefield. Next up is some base paint of Rakarth Flesh. And I'm going to use this just to block in this cow that they're carrying over their shoulder there. So picking out the leg, the texture's already coming through even with these base paints, it's just brilliant. Don't forget this bit on the top too. So move that model again so you've got lots of control and then the head will give that one coat. We'll add some black to this later so it really does look like a proper cow. And then here I'm also gonna paint in the teeth, really fiddly so make sure you've got a nice point to your brush and then pick out the teeth here on the other head and then we're going to flip it over and give the eyes a quick coat too. There we are. And th this guy's got a massive eye. This one's a little bit smaller. Next, it's Contrast Gore Grunter Fur. I really like this one. It's kind of reddy orangey brown. And this is going to be nice for all the fur trims on the arm and on the back. And again, with it got texture like this, it's surprising how much surface area there is. And I think that's why a contrast paint works really well to give you that dark shadow, but also leave some of that highlight coming through. Then it's time for some Thunderhawk Blue, another layer paint, and this is going to be really nice on the kind of loincloth that he's got going on here, and also on some of the straps on the wrist. Don't forget this little bit on the back too. And I'm aiming for a palette here of green, blue, and browny, reddy orange. And on the colour wheel, they'll be opposing each other, so that should work really nicely overall. Next up is some Flesh Terrors Red. This is a contrast paint again, and I'm going to use this to go into all these fancy bits that he's got on his knees, on the wrist, and the back as well. But I'm not gonna do the trim of it, I'm just gonna block in the center. On the knee pads, I went all over it, but on this bit, I'm trying to avoid the raised sections. The same on the back, these are a bit bigger, so I've got more control here to do that, but don't worry if you go over them. Then it's time for some metal paint with some base lead belcher. 
and this is going to go on all the silver parts of the model. So picking out that belt buttle there and then also going to turn the model and there's three little staples almost here or little parts of the chain mail that are digging into him. So I'm just picking those out. Any of these little um, rivets on the belt buckle and then blocking in the solid colour on this cleaver too. And this is just one solid piece so you can be a bit freer and a bit rougher here. Also get those boots in as well, there's a lot of metal on those so give them one nice coat of that. And I'm not watering these metals down, I'm using them right out of the pot. Base Rune Lord Brass is next and this is just going to break up the colour a little bit and I'm just going to put a little bit on the end of the club there. Also pick out the end of the cleaver and then just iron it up looking at different sections where it would look nice. I'm going to do this fancy uh, like buckle here as well. That's going to all be painted in that colour. And then again, just iron the model up. Where can I break up the different colours? I decided to go here on this raised area and give that a coat. And then I moved on to a layer canoptic alloy. So we've got lots of different metals here. It's very subtle, but I think it's going to all have a nice effect. Then I go around all the trim with this colour. So picking out this piece at the back, really taking my time now. The bigger brush helps with these kind of things, so you don't have to go for a smaller bristle. This is going to be great. As long as you've got a nice point to the brush, you're going to be fine. And then I'm just picking out some of the most raised areas on this wrist guard here. I wanted to go more solid on the club, so I went for some layer Balor Brown. Watered it down, one part paint to one part water again, and I just give it one coat all over the club there. So any part of this that's wood, that's going to get that nice effect. So I didn't want to go dark brown because that would clash with some of the other parts of the model. I felt that this colour really worked nicely. Back to some metal paints now with base Rune Lord Brass and I'm going to pick out the most raised sections on these little fancy pieces on the knees. So this is where I'm really being careful now, not to get any on the trim and also not to get any in the recesses because I want that nice red to come through that we painted earlier. So just picking out the most raised parts, taking my time and then here as well I thought we could break this up too. So I went over all the raised areas with that as well. Then Volupus Pink, we go back to that contrast paint and this is going to be now just to paint in the tongue and then I'm also going to use that to paint on the lips as well. So give that a coat. It can come out quite bright, but don't worry, we're going to tone that down a little bit as we work through the stages. Add some to his nipple there as well, and then also to the leather that's on the handle of the club. Now I take one part contrast medium and one part contrast plague bearer flesh, mix those together, and then I'm going to paint over every single area of skin. And having this real pale green in there is really going to make it look quite natural and also a little bit less human-like, I suppose. But these giants have got really human skin, so I don't want to go too crazy. They don't want to be goblins after all. Then there's some Shade Agrax Earthshade to add on. I'm going to use this on quite a lot of the sections. So everywhere that I've painted with any kind of metal paint now, that's going to get one nice coat of this. So all over these boots and all the trims and every part there. I'm also going to use this on the loincloth and all the belts and the straps. So that's going to bring out all that detail, really working it into the recesses, but you're still going to keep all those main colours coming through. Also this satchel, that's going to get a nice coat and you can see that's really good with that green. It works nicely and you need quite a lot for the chain mail, but just be careful you don't get any onto the skin. And again, even if you have done gold metal, this is all getting a nice coat. And I've also put it all over the club to work in and bring out all that texture from the wood there. And then finally, I'm going to go over the cow. So in that leg, and this is where you can start to see all the little bits of fur as well. So really nice sculpts, these. They're just so fun to paint. And then also the beard too. Although it's quite dark already with the wild wood, let's darken up a bit more. Time for some Bugman's Glow now, a base paint, and this is going to go on some of the areas that I just want to stand out a little bit more on the skin. So I'm going to go around the nipple there. I'm also going to put some on his nose, work it into that eye socket. He's lost an eye, and so he's got lots of scars around that area. So just giving it little dabs, not too bright, but it's going to stand out with the overall finish. Then I'm working it into all the fingernails, and you've got all the recesses there that's going to take that. And then where you've got all the folds of flesh and around the muscles, I'm giving a little coat too, just to darken them a little bit. And yeah, that's going to give a really nice effect. So I was really happy with how this was looking. Then it was on to some contrast skeleton horde. And he's got a little skull here that he's using to keep his bun 
tied up. So there we go, his top knot. And then I'm also going to paint over all the teeth that we did earlier. Now onto a really bright metal paint. This is base Retributor armor. And I'm going to go along this little piece of trim at the bottom of the wrist and then use it as a highlight on some of the different metallic areas. So not coating it, just picking out the most raised parts here on these little bits. Then some more shade, Reichland Flesh Shade, and this is gonna go over every single part of the model that we've got any flesh exposed. So getting that bum crack there, work it in, and then that's gonna give it a real nice fleshy look. And that green that we painted earlier is not gonna come through strong now, but it's just gonna give a very subtle effect and work nicely with this shade. I was really pleased with the combo. Then layer Ballot Brown mixed with a Shabti Bone. I don't want this too bright. And I'm just gonna go over this club now and pick out all the sections that could do with a little bit of highlighting, just so it's not just one single color. I wanna break it up a bit and yeah, give it a little bit more brightness to, the, to it there. Once that dried, I took some Contrast Plague Bearer Flesh straight out of the pot, not watering this down or anything, and I gave that one coat all over the club, and then that's just gonna make it all work nicely together. Then I took some Warboss Green and Rust Gray, and I mixed those together to make a nice gray, bluey, turquoise color, and that's gonna be used as one of the highlights over the satchel. I'm being careful here now not to go into those recesses. Then when that dried, I took some Layer Blue Horror, and then I used it on my wet palette with some of that mix I just made with those other two colors. So taking a bit and then adding that together and this is gonna act as a nice highlight for that satchel. So I'm using the wet palette for all these paints except for the contrast and the metals. And then now I'm picking the very most raised parts of this satchel, I'm dotting it along, giving it a really nice highlight and then that's gonna be the final highlight that we're gonna do on that. Then layer Rust Gray on its own now and that's gonna be used to highlight all this area of cloth here, the loincloth, so those folds that are really poking out, and I also used it to go along the edge, and then we're gonna take some blue horror on its own, and then that's gonna give us the very most highlight on this. And so that's all I'm doing really, one solid color, one shade, uh, a highlight, and then a really final highlight. And that's it, that's pretty much what I'm following for most of the sections of the model and the different colors. And then just be very careful here to get a very thin line. I'm always just dotting it on rather than painting it using the edge of the brush as well. Now it's time for some layer Ballor Brown and I'm gonna use this as a little highlight for all of this fur. And that should work nicely with a reddy brown and the Agrax Earth shade that we've already done on all the fur areas and also on the beard too. So I'm just using the side of my brush trying to catch some of that texture. Be careful here because that could really easily go into those fine strands of hair and ruin the shade that you've built up. Another layer, Bane Blade Brown now, and that's gonna give us a very nice highlight on the fur too. So just go over there, pick those raised areas up now, and now it's starting to really develop that texture, which is looking cool. And then it's time for one more layer paint, a Shabti Bone, and this is a bit more yellowy, creamy, and this is gonna be great for the blonde hair. But again, I am gonna cover this in orange later, but if you wanted to go blonde, you'd pretty much, this would be the final stage, and then you'd leave it at that. And I also used it to go over all the teeth as well. And then this was also great to add some highlight to the cow. And now with this, I'm trying to do little strokes to replicate some kind of hair or fur. And here, try not to get rid of that nice texture that's coming through again underneath. And then on the face, Jill, the head of the cow, just picking out the raised areas, grabbing the top of the nostrils there and the snout. There we go, get those ears too. Then some Contrast Black Templar. Once that was completely dry, I started to use this to add some patches onto the cow. So around the face there, I'm painting it on. And again, using it like little strokes, almost like it's the hair coming down. I painted a nice black patch on its leg. And I also did one on the top of it, on its back as well. Then it's time for base Mournfang Brown. And this is gonna be good to do a bit of a highlight all around the edge of the belts and the straps. So any of that brown leather that we painted earlier, this is gonna be nice just to bring that texture out. Then it's back to Bane Blade Brown and that'll be the final highlight along all of the straps and that really brings it to life. So it's really cool. So just having these few highlights really makes a massive difference. Now we're back to the base paint of Bugman's Glow and this is gonna be used 
to do the very front of the snout of the cow just to break it up a bit. It's a nice pinky color, a bit fleshy as well. This is awesome. I'll probably use this on one of the pigs from Moonstone. So I might do that color. I think that's going to work nicely. Also using it just to pick out some of the parts of the face. Then contrast griff hound orange, and this is going to go over all the hair. I didn't like that blonde. I felt it clashed with the club too much, so I just went all over it with a nice coat of this. Not flooding it, not putting too much on my brush, just enough to coat it. And we'll still get all that work we've done previously coming through. So actually, this worked out really good. I'll probably do that again. Then base Corax white, and this is going to be used for the very highest highlight over the cow. And again, I'm trying to get those little brush strokes to like uh, give the idea or suggest that it's hair. Then I'm going to freshen up those eyeballs and paint that in there. We're still getting nice shade coming through. We've got all the colours underneath. Being very careful on this guy because his eyes are a little bit smaller. Moving that model, getting a nice tip to my brush and having enough paint on there so it's not dry at all. Then layer Lothurn Blue. This is a stunning colour, one of my favourites. And this is going to be really nice for the eye. And I'm only going to paint it on this one big eye. The others are a bit too small. And so I can do it on this one, no problem. It's a really good size. Then layer Cadian Flesh Tone, and now we're really going to start to work on all the flesh. So I'm going to pick out all the raised areas and give this a nice coat. This is watered down again, about one part paint to one part water. And I'm only going to do one coat of this and just work my way around. I'm not trying to blend it in or anything. I want to see those brush strokes and the style I really like when I've been looking at different painted models. It's almost like the oil paintings where you can see all the different layers of colour that's been added. It's not blended together smoothly. And I really like that effect. I don't know what it's called, but I like it. And so I want to see some of that on these models. And that's what I'm trying to work on and trying to improve and almost develop a style with, I suppose. I think that's what I've found I really enjoy painting. So th this has been a great model to test it out and work on it. And here you can see I'm just picking out those sections, but leaving the recesses, leaving that shade, and then moving on to another paint. This is a mix of layer Kislev Flesh and layer Cadian Flesh Tone. So we're going brighter again, a little bit of water in there as well. And then I'm just gonna pick out the raised areas, then go in layer Flayed One Flesh with Kislev Flesh, even brighter again and now I'm getting smaller and smaller with all these sections I'm adding on and that's really going to add to the 3D effect and sell the idea that there's loads of shadow in there and there's loads of ripples in amongst all that belly fat too. This is quite a big smooth section though so here I had to be a bit bigger, a bit bolder and again I want to see those strokes so I've been quite bold here not trying to make it blend in. Then layer Flayed One Flesh on its own. This is very bright and this will be the highlight now to finish off all the flesh areas. So I'm almost just dotting it on in the sections that I think would catch the most light. Turning that mod around, really taking my time. There just a few dots along and that looks like the light's really catching it. And then on the head too. And then all the different sections, eyebrows, you're going to get the tops of the cheeks, you're going to get the nose, all those areas too. Then some contrast the lupus pink next and this is just going to be watered down a little bit so it's quite pale and I'm going to go over some sections like in the ears in the scars and he's also got the lips I've got over that again and then here on his arm he's got a few scars so I'm just dotting that on and that's just going to make those stand out just a little bit and also on the nipple too but it is watered down I don't want to put it on with just the color then layer storm host silver this is going to be for all the silver and gold areas and this will be our main highlight and you can see I'm just painting in all the little sections that are going to catch the light using the side of my brush and the texture of the model letting the model do all the work for me here and then just dot in and putting little scratches here and there for some interest picking out all the metal areas if gold or silver you can use this silver on gold as a highlight works really well dotting it on and if it's in the shadow I won't put any of it on it. Okay, let's take some technical Nahilak Oxide, and this is going to be just to age this metal a little bit. But if you put too much on, it can be a bit strong. So I'm just using it just to break up the colour. So I'm putting little dots and dashes here and there. In the recess, I'm putting a little bit more, but I don't want loads on there. I don't want it to be a solid turquoisey colour, and it's just to really rough it up a bit. So a little bit here, maybe that's enough. That's as far as I'm going to go. I'm going to wipe a touch off, try and get it in the recesses more than anything. And then also on the buckle there, there's a little bit just on the edge. And then just dot it into the chain mail as well, just to break up that area. 
When it's completely dry, I took some dry riser rust and a dry brush, and I'm just like dotting this on, flicking it around, not going heavy with it at all. There's hardly any on my brush here, but being careful just to get the metal areas. Then time for the base with layer administratum gray. And here I'm gonna water this down one to one again and just go with a nice thick outline over every single cobblestone, trying to leave a little bit of the dark gray coming through. A bit brighter now with base Corax white. And this is gonna be again going around, but now thinner and just trying to catch the edges of every single cobblestone. Maybe put a dot here and there, trying to break those lines up so they're not completely straight and smooth. Then I'm back to Stormhost Silver, and now I want to go over some areas I missed earlier, which were on the chain mail here. So just trying to catch that. It really brings it to life, adding this Stormhost Silver to it. I'm going to take a Micron 005 pen, and this is for the pupil. This is a super fine dot, it's waterproof ink, and it's going to work a treat. And this isn't cheating, don't let anyone tell you it is, because it's just an artist tool after all. And there's no reason why we can't use it for our miniatures. And it's going to get us a nice dot. We've got more control with it. And it's going to finish off the model really nicely. I think you can just about see it in the video. You can even do these tiny eyes with it. And this is what I use on all my Moonstone miniatures now. And anyone that needs a pupil, I'll be using the pen. Okay, contrast skeleton horde again. And now I'm going to paint this all over the base. That paint is completely dried from earlier. And this is going to really give us a nice colour for the ground and for the brickwork. And I really like it. I think it just ties it all together, but stands out enough from the model so it separates it. And while I've got it, I'll just put a little bit on the horns of the cow too. Then the final paint is the base Abaddon Black. And I'll be doing two coats of this all over the rim of the base. Do one coat first, let it dry completely, add another one. And then that's the model finished. And here he is, this is Dim and Dimmer from Moonstone the game, and this was one of the models I've really enjoyed painting the most from my whole collection. It was great fun, the quality of this resin really comes through in the sculpt, there's so much texture on these models, they're just a joy to paint, I love it, and I can't recommend them enough. And in the past I haven't really been that much of a painter, I've always gone for a contrast method or just trying to get things on the table quickly, but with Moonstone they've really got me going with the painting now and you don't need that many models to play the game, you only need what five or six and if the, you know, you're obviously going to want more as soon as you start collecting them, they're awesome. But, you know, you don't need many at all and so I think you can spend a bit more time on it and that's the beauty of skirmish games and Moonstone is certainly one of my favourites. But really happy with how this turned out. I like the brush strokes. I certainly want to work on that style where you can see the different brush strokes on top of each other. I think it's really fun. And the cow, I think, especially is one thing I'm really pleased with. But the faces, the expressions and details have just made this such a fun model to paint. And I hope you've enjoyed watching the video, seeing the process. And I'll be looking to develop this and get better. And hopefully you'll join me along the way. If you want to see more Moonstone, then check out my unboxing of Dim and Dimmer, where you can see their rules and exactly how they play on the table. I've also done a video on how to play Moonstone, going in depth through all the rules. I've done loads of painting videos for other characters, including Gump, and also this guy, the Pug, Doug the Flatulent, awesome model. And if you're into Moonstone already, you're a fan, then there's a Moonstone Kickstarter coming on the 10th of October 2023, where we're going to see a whole new faction. Just so exciting. Hopefully you've seen some of the reveals already, but I'll put a link down below. It'd be great if you go and check that out. Sign up now so you'll be notified as soon as it launches. Thanks so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, it'd be great if you hit the like button, subscribe for more videos like this one, and I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for helping me to keep going with these regular videos. I couldn't do this without you, and I appreciate your support so much. If you'd like to join the Patreon community, support the channel, get some great perks at the same time, there's a link down below in the description. It'll be awesome to see you there.